Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show on another instalment of the Daily Leads. Everything concerning Leeds United around four parts and, of course, Ellen Road. It is the 1st of August, guys. It is football month. It is kick-off. Premier League season kicks off this month. And, of course, you can follow all your Leeds United-related content on the Just Joe Football Show as well as some other big games thrown in, Premier League, Champions League, etc. It's all about to kick off. Before we get into the video, as always, smash a like for me. Hit the subscribe button as well, it's down here. Um, and get your notification bell smashed, because then you will never miss a live stream. We've got plenty to come watch longs before the whistle blows. And of course, I'm going to be having a chat with a few fellow Leeds fans uh, next week, next Saturday, in fact, just looking ahead to the season. You don't want to miss that, so make sure you get involved. And let's get into today's video. So, guys, we're going to start, first of all, with, of course, yesterday's pre-season friendly against Real Betis. Leeds United were beaten 3-2 down at Loughborough University. Look, it's pre-season. I'm not too concerned about the results as per se. It's more about the performances. I thought in terms of performances, Shackleton came on for an injured Lorente. I thought he was really good. Jack Harrison looked lively throughout. And I was really impressed with Junior Thurpo. Look, that left-hand side for me this season is going to be special. I I just, you know, already in my fantasy Premier League teams, I have Harrison and Furpo. I think we're going to get so many goals coming from that side. Of course, we're dangerous on the right as well with Aileen and Rafinha, but I just think that little connection that we're going to see between Harrison and Furpo is going to be special. It's going to be special. We've seen it in the first goal against Real Betis. The little one-twos, the little intricate passes. Dallas involved as well. Um, great pass, you know, to, around the corner, as it were. Third point on the end. Great ball into the box. And Bamford didn't really do all. Didn't really have a great performance. But he got in front of his man and made it 1-0 to Leeds United. And I think we'll see... Uh, I think we'll see that a lot this season, I'm not going to lie. Um, I thought Ailing was good, as I say, he went ended up having to go into centre-back due to the injury to Lorento. We're still not no wiser out how the injury is with Lorento. It seemed to me a little bit more of a precaution. It's pre-season, you don't want to risk anything. One I am concerned about, though, is, of course, Pascal Strauch. Um, he was basically kicked by Nabil Fakir. Um, because he was stronger than him. You know, I, I, Fakir was getting frustrated that the great Carly um, was just keeping him at bay because he's a big lad, Strauk, you know, and he was just like that, body checking him, you ain't getting round me. And Nabil Fakir just kicked out at him. Totally pointless. It's pre-season. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Uh, dirty Fakir. What a dirty Fakir. Um, and I'm a little bit disappointed that, and I've seen Tom Wilson mention this on Twitter as well, and I said it on my watch along, I'm a little di bit disappointed that no one didn't wipe him out. Like, I, I get it. I, I know when professional footballers have to keep their heads. But there was one moment where Rafinha had hold of his shirt and I'm thinking, Rafinha wants to take him out here, but he kept his head. Bielsa wouldn't have been happy, would he, if one of our lads would have took him out. But there was an opportunity for Cock to take him out. If that's me, he's getting two-footed. <laughs> not in a way that I'm, like, injuring him. Like, I'm not talking off the floor, two-footed dive in, but I'm going in. I'm going in and I'm taking him out. I'm a little bit disappointed that no one did that because if Pascal's injured and Laurenti is injured now, and that, we've already got issues and we haven't even started the season. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed that no one didn't get a little bit of retribution. But in terms of the game itself, look, I enjoyed the game. Pre-season friendlies can be a bit of a damp squib. This wasn't. It was enjoyable. A um, few defensive errors. Robin Cock gave it a few, away a few times. He's okay going forward, I think, just... Defensively, and I know that's his position, he's a centre-back, yeah, he should be better there. But I think, you know, he, he got beat a, a, a few times too many. It was a little bit too easy. But listen, Calvin's missing. When you're missing your linchpin, you know, whoever comes in to replace him, it's, it's always going to be tough, isn't it? You know, um, but overall, I've been OK with pre-season yet. <clears throat> Results haven't gone our way. We're still yet to win in pre-season. But as I keep saying, and I say it on streams, it doesn't really matter. It's a much of a muchness. You know, it's about the lads getting out there. They look fit. They look fit. I will say that much. We already know that that's it's just peak, peak Leeds United, peak Bielsa. But they do look on it in that respect. Um, and look, we've got a pre-season friendly against Ajax, which again will be another tough test. And then we finish up next weekend, next Saturday against Villarreal. Again, you're Europa League champions, you know. These are not these are not poor teams that were playing in pre-season. You know, Blackburn gave us a good test. 
Rio Betis, and it'll just continue to get tougher. But the Leeds United team will get stronger, you know. They'll get into the stride. There won't be as many changes. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because, look, Costa came on, didn't really do much. Gave it away, gave away fouls, as he always seems to do. Tyler Roberts, yeah. I want to see Somerville involved in the first team set up for the friendly on Wednesday against Ajax. I want to see him coming off the bench. Um, but look, the result, it doesn't really matter. People overreacting, don't worry about it. Manchester United were beaten 4-1 by QPR. If that's a competitive game, they don't get beat. Do you know what I mean? These things happen. West Ham got battered in pre-season last season. They ended up getting Europa League football. These things happen. Just relax. Just relax. Now, just moving on to a confirmed transfer, guys. A confirmed transfer. Transfer. Yes, Leeds United are still doing, still doing business. I know it's been very, very quiet. But we are doing business. We, of course, confirmed the signature of Christopher Glasson from Valarenga for, for, for a fee reported just over a million pound, 1.5, although we were told it may be a little bit more than that. But it's in excess of one million pound. The, keep, the keeper comes in with a, a really good reputation. Uh, I'm going to give you some more information now. Graham Smith did an article at the YEP just giving us some more information, some more in-depth information on Christopher Glasson and what he can bring. So I'm just going to go through that with you now. So, Christopher Klassen, as I say, another youth international goalkeeper, signed to Leeds United with very high potential, much like Ilian Melier. He signs on a four-year deal. Um, despite his tender years, Klassen has rocked up 54 top-flight appearances within the Valarenga setup. He's played every minute in the league this season and missed just one single game in 2020 through suspension. His first team breakthrough came in 2019 when he, and that is when he caught the eye of Leeds United's head of European recruitment, Gabby Ruiz. Uh, Leeds approached Valarenga back then in 2019 to discuss the youngster, but ended up signing Melier from Lorient. Uh, and obviously, Lorient went on to be our number one, you know. Um, he was given an opportunity when. Kiko made it, you know, a few errors and he and he, he ran with it, you know, and, and we're all so grateful that he did because Ilya Men Melier is an exceptional goalkeeper. Um, Valarenga, though, um, as I say, have long known about Christopher Klassen's talent. Um, they know, and not only that, but so does the Norwegian Football Federation. He was, he was given a call up to the Norway national team back in March. Of course, it was scuppered due to COVID. Um, he's already represented Norway internationally all the way from under 15 right up to under 21 level um so he's got some decent pedigree uh, he became a regular for Valerenga B back in 2017 age just 17 year old guys you know for a goalkeeper to be getting capped at 17 um, and, and playing first-team football, it, it, it's big, man. It's big. There is some caution, though, because he's not a carbon copy of Ilian Melier. Uh, he can take the ball out of the box like Melier, but his overall performance as an outfield player is of a lower quality. You know, it's definitely not up to Premier League standard. Uh, Klassen does excel, though, as a shot stopper. Um, but he is not strong in the air. This is coming from Norwegian press uh, in the Graham Smith article that, look, he's a great shot stopper with his feet, not so much, needs to improve, um, and he's not great in the air, which when you read, you're a bit like, oh, God, <laughs> we've not bought a dodgy keeper here, have we? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But look, Valerenga play very direct, yeah? So it's different to how you would expect him to play when he's at Leeds United. OK, um, his technique in terms of distribution is good, but he's very left footed, which can be a problem under pressure. If he's put on his right, he's going to have to move it on to his left. And when you've got an onrushing striker, it's difficult to do. However, I think a season under Melier, which is, which is mad when you think how old Melier is, but a season working with him and working every day in the Legion United setup will only increase his development in that area, you know. And it's been reported and, and journalists have said that's why he's better going to the Premier League, being a second choice, as opposed to playing in Norway. If you don't remember when I was talking about the possibility of signing Christopher Klass, and I had question marks over it because I, I didn't think this guy would want to leave first-team football to come and work under uh, and be a number two, as it were, when you're playing first-team football. But look, there's a different standard, isn't there, between 
Norway and of course uh, playing in the Premier League even if it is a number two and the experience you'll get from working under Melier and of course the Leeds United setup can only um, you know improve him the article went on to say Leeds obviously need a goalkeeper good with his feet and although I would not call Klassen a ball playing goalkeeper it's certainly not a weak area of his game and in fact, he has improved a lot in these last two seasons with Valerenga in terms of how he's able to play out from the back under pressure. Um, they believe he's a great goalkeeper who could definitely flourish under Marcelo Bielsa. His range and accuracy of passing has improved nicely. And he's definitely at least comfortable with the ball at his feet now. Um, his athleticism and recovery pace uh, recovery pace, sorry, is impressive also. So there are there are many pluses, great shot stopper, young, Norwegian international. He's got a big future ahead of him, but he does need to work in that distribution area. And we know that's key when playing for Leeds United. The last thing we want is another Kiko Casillas situation, don't we? And I think what has been quite glaring for me during pre-season, the under Melier, this, and, and even if Kiko was here, it'd still be the same. The standard of goalkeeping isn't great at Leeds United. I don't think Van der Heuvel covered himself in glory. I don't think Elliot Capriel covers himself in glory. So I, I'm hopeful that Christopher Klassen is adequate, adequate understudy number two to Ilian Melier. And I think by him at this age, if there comes a time when Ilian Melier moves on, then he's a ready-made replacement that we've paid nothing for. Nothing for, really. Do you know what I mean? And that's what it's about. That's all about great recruitment. I think the, the, the thing that really gives me positive vibes is the fact that we were looking at this guy when we were looking at Melier. Yes, we opted for Melier, but he was still considered as one of the top goalkeepers to buy at that time for us. And when Kiko moved on, he was on that list as well. Of course, he was second choice because we did go for Freddie Woodman. And I understand why Woodman wouldn't want to come and be a number two. Do you know what I mean? I think he's further on in his career than what Christopher Klassen is. But I'm excited by it. And so is Christopher Klassen. Christopher Klassen said it's a club with a lot of history, a lot of potential, and it has a huge fan base in Norway. We know massive supporters in Scandinavia of Leeds United. He said the coaching staff here are brilliant and I feel like I'll be able to develop a lot. I'm really happy to be at Leeds United. And we are happy that you are here as well, Christopher. Welcome on board, my friend. The link to the full article on Christopher Klassen is in the description. Make sure you check it out. Another article that I enjoyed reading was one of uh, Pablo Hernandez. Uh, Phil Hay did an absolutely exceptional article uh, in The Athletic on Pablo Hernandez. And Pablo Hernandez had some lovely words to say about Leeds United. He basically said, look, you cannot always hope to feel love from the fans. If you come away from football with this, you can be happy for forever. And that's one thing that, that, that Pablo has come away from Leeds United with is the love of the fans. And he, he had something more to add, which, which I just thought was absolutely amazing. He said, I played good football at Valencia in the Champions League, but the years at Leeds, the goals and the assists, they're the best stats of my career. No argument. Promotion to the Premier League was the best feeling of my life. And that is from Pablo Hernandez, who isn't from Leeds, isn't from England, he's from Spain. You know, played in the Champions League with Valencia. Won stuff at Swansea, I believe. You know, came to Leeds United, bought into it. We bought into him. He was, is the best player at this football club for a very long time. And he single-handedly dragged this football club into the Premier League. And he'll forever be immortalised at Leeds United for that goal against Swansea. You know, I have fond memories of that. I shared it with Connor and Oscar. Uh, we did a watch along. I'll never forget it. He scored, he scored, and then Connor. Yes. Um, oh, it was amazing. Amazing. And uh, for him to say that without question, without question, no argument, promotion to the Premier League was the best feeling of his life. He's amazing. He's amazing. Give him the keys to the city. Pablo, you are welcome. Back to Leeds, to England, whenever you like, whenever you like. Uh, I love the man. I love the man so much. Um, we're now going to move on to, uh, just briefly, as I say, it's now being reported in South America. 
that Venezuelan international Yangel Herrera is set to join Leeds United. Um, apparently, Marcelo Bielsa sees him now as the next target for our centre midfield position. Um, of course, we know he shined whilst at Granada in La Liga and in the Europa League. He's currently on City's books. It will be a loan. I feel that Leeds United might favour a loan so they can spend some cash on the winger option. Um, look, I'm not going to lie to you. Like At this moment in time, when it comes to the centre midfielder, I do not have a Scooby-Doo. I do not have a Scooby-Doo. I don't think many people do. Not even the reputable journalists know who this centre midfielder is. It was Conor Gallagher. It was. And he was number one. People say, ah, oh, now we moved on. No, he was number one. We didn't get that done. He's gone to Palace. Yangel Herrera keeps getting linked. Lewis O'Brien's been linked a few times. Only twice, really, start of the month now, most recently. Jens Kajusta, I'm still not convinced it's Leeds United. I, I'm not. I'd like him. I'd like him, but I, I just I'm not sure. Honestly, I do not have a clue who the centre midfielder is. I don't. But we need to get one in quick. We do because God forbid if we've got injuries at centre back, we're then having to move parts around again. If Firpo was to get injured, Dallas goes in there. Then what happens? You know, I think. We need to start seeing some movement in that area for me. We're only two weeks out. I'm not concerned. I'm not worried. But I do think we need to start seeing some movement. And hopefully this week we will. That's what I mean. Like, we're, we're now in August. We're now in August. Transfer window closes towards the back end of the month. We've got two weeks before the season starts. Whoever does come in is not, not playing in that Manchester United game. That's for sure. I don't think anyway. And the winger's going to be late. We knew that. But we, we need to get our skates on. But I wish I could give you some more solid information when it comes to incomings in terms of the centre midfield position. But I can't. And I'd be lying and I'm not just going to make rubbish up if it's not there, if there's nothing out there. I just didn't, genuinely don't have a clue. If anyone does, please get in my DMs. Send me some ITK stuff, will you? Um, but yeah, uh, just to finish, guys, as well, there's been some changes at Ellen Road. Um, of course, we were speaking about Pablo Hernandez and he used to be on the boards outside Ellen Road, along with the likes of Luke Kaling. We're now seeing some changes there just outside uh, Ellen Road. You can see there, Ilya Melier and Patrick Bamford have been erected on the side there. And also, um, I've been told, uh, or I've seen it on Twitter, that someone was at Ellen Road and they spoke to the lads who were doing them and they said the next one will be Cock and Rafinha. So Cock and Rafinha will be... <laughs> I realise Cock will be erected on the other side, <laughs> alongside Rafinha. That is everything I've got for you today in the day of the leads. I'm sorry there's not more information for you in terms of incomings, but listen, I can't make this stuff up if it ain't there. We'll have to wait and see. I'm sure, I'm sure in the coming days it will get very, very busy. In terms of what you can expect from myself on the Just Your Football show this week, guys, um, we will have a live stream, of course, for the Ajax game on Wednesday. I'll be live on Thursday with the Before the Whistle Blows crew for some more predictions for the Premier League season. I'm also going to be live at Saturday at 3pm with some fellow Leeds United content creators discussing our thoughts a week out from the big opener. Uh, and of course, I'll be live for the Villarreal game on Saturday evening as well. So you've got loads to look forward to on the channel. Of course, the daily leads will continue. And then the following week, we'll be into previews, reviews and all that jazz. I think for one, cannot wait. Thank you as always for your support. Please subscribe down here, smash a like on your way out as well, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out now. Leads, leads, leads.